back with more system open from Toronto round, action. We are in round five, bringing you a potential bubble match. Both of these opponents are three and one, fighting for their day two berths. Uh, we got some wonderful individuals here for you to say, flying out of the peg, I believe, as you were saying earlier, Winnipeg. Yes, yeah. we have Chad Henderson flying from the X-Wing Junkies out of Manitoba, Winnipeg, Manitoba, the yep. home of Crown Royal. Yeah. Uh, well, it's actually from Gimli, but it's very close to Manitoba. It's from Gimli? It's from Gimli, yeah, but it's very close to, to Winnipeg. Um, so for this one match, for a very brief moment, yeah. people from Toronto will actually acknowledge that Manitoba is, in fact, a real place. I mean, you can neither confirm nor deny, but people were pining for us to get some FO on the on the board, so we thought we would do two birds of one, three birds of one stone, a double bubble match, an FO match, and a celebrity death match. We had to get... Uh, the man himself, Mr. Dio Morales, on stream as well. We've been holding him down because we wanted to get a bunch of other things in there, but we couldn't stop casting without getting that sultry sweet persona onto our stream. Oh, we are just so thrilled to have as many uh, American. Oh yeah, the uh, turnout's been amazing on their end. Podcast casters and talent uh, up from upstate New York. We got the Burning River Squadron up from Cleveland. We got uh, the boys from Michigan. We got Evan Bolrus and the boys from upstate New York. Mm -hmm. uh, Syracuse here. Who else? We got Dion up from Chicago. Yeah. We got D yeah. all the way from uh, L.A. Um, yeah, it's been amazing to see the turnout from our uh, brothers from another state, country. Yeah, I mean, it's great. I mean, there's always been a very healthy cross-border oh, yeah. rivalry between From the some stuff of that's us, been close, but, but the fact that people have traveled. great tournaments. Even, even, even our West Coast brethren, too. Kalen flew in over here. You had yeah. to play him first round. We would have wanted to get you guys on stream. Well, we I, he played. Happen. I kind of just sat there and I, took it. So. Don't worry. I played against him. That's usually what it feels like all the time. Uh, but, you no, know, actually, our, our game was very close, and it was very, very good. So he's, we had some West Coasters flying in, and this is a good chance for me to see just what all this Dormouse crap is all about. All right, so we got the boys from the, the X-Wing Junkies chiming in on the Twitch chat, uh, razzing up their boy Chad Henderson here, mm -hmm. who, of course, is bringing a modified version of multiple Upsilon lists, yeah. which is Lieutenant Dormitz coming in at uh, I-2 with hyperspace tracking data, Starkiller base pilot with... Uh, hyperspace tracking data, um, pattern analyzer, the meanest uh, biatch with a with, with a stormtrooper helmet, Captain Phasma, collision detector, and electronic baffle. That's a nasty ship right there. That I one? love Phasma. The stacked she's a great up card. one, and I'm assuming that's the one that's oh, that's the one that's out in front. Yeah, Phasma is essentially just a 2.0 yeah. mo uh, modification or rendering, if you will, of, of, of Mara, Mara Jade, Jade from 1.0. R.I.P. Great underused card. R.I.P. Right? Legends. Yeah, and then of course rounds off his list with uh, quick draw. Mm -hmm. Coming Never a wrong choice when you're flying FO. The uh, that's like the, the base. I feel like that's like the I will have one quick draw, please, and that's what you get when you order that. That's you a lean quick draw, that, sixty points. Yeah, but that's what you would put on it if you were yeah. going to take it. Yeah, fanatical SF uh, gunner and fire control system. All the things it needs and none of the things that it doesn't. Zion so, decided he'd start his list by uh, hitting Control C and then Control V. Yep. Uh, so he's got three of the same and then one that's uh, only slightly different. Yeah, I think just something went wrong in that last one there. Just Razin because we love. Uh, it's a very powerful, very potent, very prominent list we've seen. There's actually not very many of them here, only a handful. Um, they're all so fighting for... So I did for, do a count. Yeah. There were five. Well, that's not that many considering we have 130. Five. They were all being flown by formidable Phantom players. Yeah. And with the exception of Mr. Morales and the PTL Open champion, Robin McNeil, yeah. most of them are not doing very well. And that's the thing. Poor Dion Camp, he doesn't have his Kylo. With His Kylo's been de a little bit, so it's been a little bit tougher for him. I, know, I feel his pain. I've always wanted to fly Kylo, too, and it's not, I'm not sure what to do. The one thing that's just like if you if you like there's a lot of people out there that watch you on stream, and he's a fantastic human being. Oh yeah. But there's a lot of people out there that don't realize that Dion has invested so much of his time and effort into casting and producing X-wing content that he has not spent a lot of time playing in premier events. Yeah. So well, he's usually bringing them to everybody else to watch instead of playing himself. Correct. But playing a premier event. Yeah. And casting a premier event, despite casting being an exhausting effort. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm like I'm looking at Dion now, and I looked at him last round when he was playing two tables up for me. The man kind of looks like a zombie at yeah. this point. Like he's, I think he's running out of steam. Like he's kind of looking like a character from Mortal Kombat yeah. at the end of the round. Like finish him, just kind of like on his on his feet there. Yeah. So um, we're gonna see if his endurance holds out here. Chad has deployed the dormants and done the forwards, jammed his Upsilons right in there. Uh, Dion so range not round combat is how these Upsilon lists usually work. Sorry, turn one combat. It That's is a very shtick. turn one combat oriented list, 100%, because they take three turns to turn around. 
I don't know how I feel comfortable about, like, I mean, he could just, Dion could just face it by all just going two forward and, and taking evade tokens. I mean, at the end of the day, it's if a lot of Dion dice. trades one Phantom yeah. for one Upsilon He's happy. Each, two Phantoms can take quick draw. Absolutely. So this will be a very close uh, go. And Absolutely. it looks like Dion definitely has uh, plenty of um, uh, fans chiming in on, on the chat, which is great to see. Uh, we got a couple of chirps coming out about the Canada versus U.S. matchup here. I like our odds, mm -hmm. Canada's odds. I definitely would not put it past Dion pulling this one out, though. Uh, digging those double-sided um, evade and cloak the tokens. stream-friendly uh, Gigantor Fox Track tokens, as I'm calling them now. I mean, he, he says they're stream friendly, but he just wants to walk around with the giant tokens. They're the Fox Track tokens from here on out and will forever be north of the border. Apologies here. This is a blue milk friendly stream. Absolutely. Um, so here we go. Well, Quick Truck gets up there really fast too, though. He sure does. Yeah, Quick That's kind right of a there. favorable. That might end up being a favorable uh, exchange for Chad because of the fact that he's got two arcs, tons of health. Now, if you're Dion, do you throw all your dice quick draws away, or do you just try to get one of the Upsilons off the table? I'm very surprised that Chad put Quick Draw in range of the back Phantoms. Mm. I mean, it, all right, so FCS from Quick Draw here. Yep, we got two hits and a crit going now, on. Now, because of all Phantom the shen ooh, that's what you want to see. No, 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 uh, We got Dion rolling two evades there. So because of all the shenanigans that are on, on these. number two or number one. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's number one. I think he was targeting number one, wherever his target lock would sure be. sure number one yeah. there. Yep, number one. So as I said, so these guys are all starting fully fully token, focused and evaded, and that's all because of the uh, tracking data? Correct. So the way hyperspace tracking data works is if you deploy within range two, mm -hmm. each copy of hyperspace tracking data awards a focus or evade token. Okay. So the Upsilon's jamming right in there on turn one. Sometimes yep. they reinforce. Yeah. Sometimes they coordinate. Yeah. All right, so we got number two shoot at number one again. Or sorry, yeah, the Upsilon shooting at number one Phantom. No, number four Phantom shooting. Yeah, that's oh, what it's I the mean. Phantom sorry, shoot, yeah. yeah. So, so it's Dion's turn now because Quick Draw has shot all four of the Phantom shoot before the I2 Upsilon. So and it looks like Dion has decided to. Oh, Dion is debating thinking. whether or not to shoot a Quick Draw here. And I got to tell you guys, between you and me and the lamppost, that is the call. Shooting if you the kill, Quick Draw? If you quote Quick Draw in this turn, you basically can. Yeah. He's so he's going for it. Yeah, he's doing it. You've got two ships that can't turn around, and you can get behind them. You got it, man. I mean, the Upsilons are very powerful vessels, but they do take a very long time to turn around. Juke in the one. He's going to squeak one by. He's going to take the jam damage. Uh, is he going to proc Quick Draw's ability? We're just waiting to hear if he's going to proc Quick Draw's ability. Yeah, here. sounds yep. like Quick Draw's going to proc his ability. Quick Draw going to spend the charge. Ooh, that's he's not great. He's got FCS. Yeah, he does. Definitely wanted to spend that lock, but no. Nope. Oh, you got to hold on to that focus. You got to hold on to it. Yeah, so disappointing volley from Quick Draw there. Not necessarily sure it was worth the one shield, but yeah, the Phantom cleanly evades. No token spent. That's uh, that's a pain in the zip me up. That's right a straight there. one for one. Yeah. Okay, so three Phantoms left to shoot. With Quick Draw's ability gone, you know he's. Fo I, I think. I think. Yeah, you put everything. Everything. Yeah, you everything juke away. Goes. You juke away quick draw shields. You drop. You drop her shields right now, and then the, the the gimmick's gone. Well, I mean, like, there's there's more to a list of four phantoms than just the jukes. The jukes no, are definitely was, the most annoying part of. What I was saying was that if you list. drop the shields on quick draw, then it's the ability. The, the gimmick of the ability is gone. All right, so we got three shooting at uh, quick draw here. Quick draw, I got to cleanly evade that one. Yep. Well, you'll juke one. Unless that was the jukeless one. Number three does have juke. It's number one that does not have juke. Ah. Yeah. So he would very clearly take one then. He's just deciding whether or not. Mm, not a lot more. Mm. Okay, so number two, uh, probably going to shoot next. Uh, Apostas, how do you avoid getting hit by these by these ups? You don't. Yeah, you don't. If the, you begin, if you begin a it. game against a Upsilon player, assuming that you will not get shot on turn one, you have deployed incorrectly. Yeah. You must assume that you are going to engage on turn one. See, I disagree with some of the other chat members. Flying at the Upsilons is usually fine But, sometimes. I mean, there was, where was Dion going to go? He was going to hard two to the left and just give a broadside for no reason. This list is set up to engage on turn one. Yeah, you, you have, have, to, to, you have engage to get it. behind them at the yeah. end of the day. So just one from that phantom there. Yeah. Quick draw, going to jet juke, and he's going to have to spend one of his tokens as well. Yep. Okay, so that was number two, and then number one is the one without Juke uh, shooting a quick draw here. Two shots. 
Quick draw getting two dice. Juke the one. Oh, the he's juke. got an evade still. Damn. No damage on quick draw. Very, very interesting. We got one shield yeah. on quick draw being shaded for one shield on the jukeless Sigma. I thought he got two down on quick draw. No, no, he spent tokens and kept them. Wow. Upsilon rolling red hot Ooh. fire. Uh, spending one token. Ooh, that's nasty. Phantom number one going to have to spend evade not to take a gut punch in the face there. Two damage into numero uno. Uh, back upsilon has got no shot, so we are off to the planning phase. Three Phantom's going to use their evade tokens, flip those tokens over, take yeah. cloak tokens. Well, so that guy, so Sigma one is just going to be a blocker next round. That's what it is. Now, it's at this time that I would like to take a moment and talk to you man-to-man, Sabit. Sabit, you are one of the most in-love men I have ever met with phantoms. You yeah. love phantoms to the point where if, like, you could get your wife to dress up as a phantom pilot, that would be awesome. So yes. Let me well, ask yeah, this. I got my wife to draw me whisper and echo cards. Now, I'm more concerned with the notion of the opening sequence of the movie The Force Awakens, where okay. you walk in, or sorry, the, the old dude walks out of the tent, and Kylo Ren's there, and you loved Phantoms from 1.0, but I feel like that conversation is so perfect for you, because it's like, look what you've become. Oh, yeah. Something far worse has Oh, yeah, so my two favorite ships from <laughs> 1.0 in the Empire, Phantoms and Punishers. I waited two bloody years for Punishers to be good, and now I can't fly them, otherwise I'll be shamed. <laughs> I've flown a Punisher freaking once in 2.0. Now, we don't shame anyone. No, as well you should. It's horrible. It's horrible to shame people for No, no, the ship is horrible way. is what I'm trying to say. It's too good. Um, I mean, I did fly in, in this season at PTL. I flew two Punishers with, before the points adjustment, of course. Right, I flew right. them with Trajectory Sim. All the bombs and all the things. I was a, I was a horrible person. Christian's rush hour list with two Punishers and three bombers. Oh my god! I don't I don't think that like one Phantom in a list is bad. It's just like I look at something like this and uh, it's it's definitely got a lot of advantages over a lot of other lists. I mean, it's a potentially better X wing. Yeah, like I'm, three, three, three and two. I mean, it's less hull, okay, but with the evade token and and the juke on top of it and the attack, it's. Uh, clarification, no, Quick Draw is only missing one shield, spent all the tokens, and uh, only taken one shield in that last volley. So this so this, so this, this guy right here, he's not going to want to sit still. He's going to want to, what, one bank and bump, assuming that these guys are all going to come back here? No, I would probably and stop. And then one banks? I mean, number two is the one with Pattern Analyzer. Yeah. Right? So you've got, um, you've got a great option there for just stopping and taking an action, yep. partic particularly when it's... If you're gonna stop, you could also it's not there anymore. You know, coordinate, which yep. is a really powerful combination in 2.0. The ability for you to get your big base ship arc to stay put, keep probably three or four of those phantoms in arc, and then coordinate an action to quick draw. So quick draw can do that one. I bank. was gonna say, here's a really weird question: Can you coordinate a coordinate? Yes. That'd be interesting for the low. So he could coordinate a coordinate on this one to give an action there, and then move and do an action, and then do an action. Correct. It'd be silly, but that would be fun. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I mean the 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 up uh, the ability to um, domino effect certain game functions is is definitely prevalent in 2.0. Mm -hmm. I saw an absolutely hilarious one earlier today. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. Two copies of static discharge veins on the same ship? No, on two different okay. ships. Okay. So one of them takes an ion token. Yeah. Takes the stress, passes the ion to the second one who takes the stress and passes it to an enemy ship. Nice. So you basically have like a Daisy range chain? to bubble. That's amazing. Of like somebody to give an ion token to. I love cute interactions. Oh, so it looks like some of the people in the chat were calling that maybe Tion is going to take the whole list and just zoom forward, get past that wall of fire, and put all of his energy on that one. Table judge, Mr. Cameron Murray from the GRX X-Wing Club out of Kitchener-Waterloo on the table. Um have to be a judge and have to just wound over being in Dion's magnificent presence. Yeah. Um, Death Revive has got a great point. The Phasma, the Phasma game is so strong in this edition. Her stress, uh, basically shutting down cloaks, is huge. Absolutely huge. Jam is also a very, very, very effective tool against this list. I Absolutely, have, because they have uh, jam on the action bar. I have one. I'm, I'm about 50% against Phantoms with mm -hmm. my Sloan mm -hmm. squad. Because the shuttle rocks the jam. 
That's you got it, man. You come right in there, you jam, you shoot the jamming beam, all of a sudden focus evade gone, and yeah. then the rest of your ships all shoot at the uh, tokenless phantom. Conditions are definitely going to become a much bigger part of this game, even though they already are. I think once we all settle into 2.0 and have a chance to play our ships and find the ones we like, there's so many, like, Jam is still nasty. Ion is still nasty. Sabine is still nasty. Yeah, control, the new stuff control coming out. pieces are tremendously more powerful. Absolutely, because, because tokens aren't token prevalent. Stacks, yeah. You got it. I mean, take this triple Upsilon list that everybody's been talking about. Mm -hmm. I have not lost against it yet, because all you do is bring a jamming beam. Turn one, the the front Upsilon has a reinforced two evade tokens and, a, and an eyeball. Yeah. You're like, okay, I shoot first. Jamming beam, range yeah. one. Now you have no green tokens. Does it get rid of all of them, <laughs> or just one? Them. The jamming beam deals... Jam tokens instead of hits. Oh, it's no different than the jam action. Range oh, one, you get the shoot. extra dies. So, so they four dies. So the zero point jam beam Boom. might be the hero we deserve. It is the hero we deserve, exactly. Interesting. This is going to get comfy. Very conveniently uh, located on the far side of the streaming table. Yeah. Away from the action. Away camera. from where we can see everything and draw everywhere. It's all good. All behind those giant bat wings. No, I'd I fold mean, them down. Dion's, Dion's strategy is sound. He's got to get behind these oofs. Absolutely. Um, Chad is playing it very effectively, cutting off all of the K-turn angles. Which is why that stop um, there was very huge. I honestly think that I don't even think one Phantom would fit in the intervening space between those two Upsilons at this point. Mm -hmm. So it looks like one of them is reinforced. And we're going to mark, see if uh, Phantom 2 can get out of there. Ooh, Ooh. Spicy. Interesting. That may dodge Upsilon number two's arc and give him arc on quick draw. The wings of the Upsilon shuttle being about as easy to use as a uh, Rubik's Cube. It's easily point. one of my favorite looking ships. It's such a unique and impressive you know, profile. But yeah, it's just obnoxious to, to play around. Flap, flap. Very lovely move. That was Dion. a great move by Dion. Let's see what he does here with the other ones. Except for the five dice attack that he's going to get out of the other one. But still a great move. Yolo Better than just you. flying in and bumping, though. I mean, he Yolo. took a, a rough situation. He's trying to make something out of it. Dion taking Phantom number one, trying to get him out of... It was a 4K. Interesting. Okay, so he's going to take a stress token here, probably get out of a number two's arc. But we then he's going to double stress when he gets the Phasma stress. Yeah, Phasma's on, on the Upsilon that's closest to us. Mm -hmm. So... He's going to get his fair choice of which Phantom he wants to stress at the end of this engagement. Phase. Personally, I always double stress whenever it's an option. As we yeah. saw in a previous game against Jean, it, double stressing is just nasty. I yeah. think he's going for maximum bumpage. I he's mean, looking to kill box Quickdraw. Uh, he's definitely done it well, unless Quickdraw three banks out of there. Anybody on the stream uh, chiming in today, make sure you chime in on the chat. Show your love for Mr. Sumi Vats is going to have to take off after this. Yeah, if Phasma was able to double stress, I think she'd be a little broken. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the things. Like, doubling of any condition, I think, was one of the was one of the ethos of this edition, was to take away any doubling of any sort of interaction. Someone should have told them about that veteran turret gunner thing because they Slow. completely forgot. But yeah, Sloan, but yeah, but I mean, you, you have know, to lose a ship for that. That's to happen, exactly. Right? You yeah. have to have a detrimental effect for it to yeah. happen. I think Sloan's a pretty cool card. I love the way that I think works. It's pretty fair and balanced. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some I've seen some really interesting variants of Sloan. Yeah. I saw an OGP with four tie aggressors. Nice. With ion cannon That's turrets. interesting. That's really interesting. So it looks like we've got all of the moves down. So that sloop from Chad was pretty inspired. Yeah, it was a perfect call on Chad's part. I don't know how he called no, I mean neither. That, I mean, I, I don't know if he thought the whole set of phantoms were going to decloak up board and then go four forward. So that's the thing. So if Sion had brought them all here into the one bank, that was a sad panda right there. So he actually absolutely banked on it all being the forward maneuver to yeah. get in behind him. All right, so we got quick draw firing at number four. Yep. Range uh, one with range lock. One. We got quick draw with a focus token who was coordinated by the lieutenant. Oh, he's firing at number number two. Number one, the damage one. Gotcha. All right, spending the lock. Lock is on number one. Yeah, that yeah. makes more sense. Four That'll dice. do it. That'll do it for number one. Honestly, does not matter what nope. the other one is. But it was dead either way. That's all good. But we always deal the cards out. You got to deal all the cards out. Well, absolutely. You should always do that, players, if you're out there and you get over damage. You should always deal out your cards. It affects the game state because the crits... Different things, the different different ships that look through the deck to find cards and stuff like that. You should always do that. 
And these 2.0 crits to me, they are. Are they nasty? Uh, yeah. Nasty. Yes. Like not being able to go do straight maneuvers with, with a striker. I sit next to. Oh, one sorry. Boat. Only being able to do straight maneuvers <laughs> with your striker. I did have that happen to me today, but I cleared it. it yeah. Great. Well, I, I had no choice to clear it because I was going <laughs> to die anyways. I played one game next to a guy. A poor guy had uh, a fuel leak in every game he'd played today. Yeah. Oh, rough. that's rough. Yeah, fuel yeah. leak is brutal. It is brutal. It's absolutely it's totally brutal. brutal, especially because if you fuel le fuel leak into a direct hit. Yeah. Which is nasty. All right. So Phantom Four going to shoot at uh, Upsilon Two. That makes sense. Range See one. if he can't dump a few into uh, the Star Killer base pilot here. Nope, just hit crit. Hit crit and maximum one. disrespect. One shield. One shield. One paltry shield. So anybody chiming in from the United States? Just to clarify, up here in Canada, when you roll one evade on one die with no mods, we call that a disrespect evade. As in, like an fu. I roll mm -hmm. an evade. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of disrespect on the top tables. We've had a lot of really low evade dice ship. There hasn't been anything. Well, we had that one one match uh, when we had the high Imperial Aces, which is a, a delight for my eyes. Right on. So All right, we've so we got Phantom number three shooting at uh, the Upsilon number two. Makes sense. Oh, is two he going to keep that focus? I mean, he's in two Upsilon arcs there. I would not spend that focus. There. Oh, it is rain one. No, that's the one that fell out of the board. Oh. Oh, he's spending it. He's giving her. Oh, that's a quick draw. That's why. It's four dice. And then he jukes for, for, for three damage. So he's going to give Quick Draw the ability to fire the range one. Procker proc ability for the last time. All right, so just recap. That was Phantom number three taking a range one shot on Quick Draw. Mm -hmm. Rolled one blank, one eye, two hits. Mm -hmm. Average roll on four dice. Mods to three. Jukes the one evade result on Quick Draw. Going to get two shields and a damage on Quick Draw here. Mm -hmm. Uh, unless Quick Draw spends the focus, which he doesn't, going to spend his Quick Draw charge He's and fire back. Absolutely going to hold on to that focus for the return fire shot. Yeah. I would I mean, too. If, you're, if you've lost your ability's your gone now, anyways, you're you're, you're just Ty SF with a lot of points. Yeah. Well, a high initiative Ty SF. So Quick Draw is going to take the range two onto Phantom two, trying to strip some. Uh, doesn't need that ooh. focus. Should he use Fanatical instead? Who needs focuses? So that. Phantom does have an evade token, just pondering whether or not to spend it or take two shields on number two here. Number two's about to get lit up by number uh, by Upsilon number three there. Gonna to spend be, that evade. Yeah, to be honest with you, he didn't probably even want to decloak that next round. No, probably not. I He's think probably going to K-turn. Yeah, it was a terrible spot for that one to decloak next turn. Going to take one shield on Phantom number two, mm -hmm. and I think that might do it. Here comes the uh, the Upsilon <coughs> shot. The cannon. Dice. Yowzers. Just Ooh, three hits. One of eight, taking two on that number two. Number two in the hull now at half health. And Upsilon number two going to shoot at Phantom number three, I imagine. If they has arc. No Stay arc there from uh, Upsilon number two. Mm -hmm. Phantom's numbers three and four cloak. And Phantom number two is a sad panda. I don't know if he's a sad panda. He's a good blocker. Sitting on two hull. Well. I mean, that, that Phantom number two is literally cutting off any chance that Dormance has to coordinate anybody. But, so Dormance is unstressed because he didn't stop. So he just stops. Yeah, this but Dormance doesn't have the, this uh, can clear and give that guy. the pattern analyzer. Right, but this guy can move first, clear, and coordinate that guy. The non Dormance one can move first, coordinate. So me, having flown a bunch of big base ships, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, I don't know if that one bank from Upsilon 2 is going to maintain range 2. Two. Okay, well, you would know better than I would, absolutely. Well, I mean, I'm not saying I know from looking at it on a screen, but it's pretty bloody You'd have close. to be there to make it's that call. It's pretty darn close, yeah. So that's what? That's range, that's uh, 1.25 dice uh, bases. What do you think? Where's that Shadowcaster knowledge coming out here, Tim? Shadowcasters don't do one banks. <laughs> They have maneuvers slower than three. Boosts. That's they, about it. They have maneuvers slower than three. They don't boost at all in 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying. The Phantom has uh, one banks, two forward, two banks, three forward that are blue. So this so this Phantom is, this guy can get there to get out of this one's way so that this one can decloak that way and still do this or this if it wants to. It's just this guy is going to have the three kids. So it's very tight in this board space. It's. I don't like it. It's tight, not in the good way. It's tight like a toyger. It's not. It's tight in the not good way. So I'm. Is he gonna go ship left? Yeah, he's gonna go ship left. Yeah, he just can't do it. He's probably gonna do a two or a three bank, is what no, I would I think expect. He's gonna do a three bank. Yeah, he's trying to ram that one in there and block the other one. Yeah. 
Of course, he's going to move after that ship. So. Dion also going to decloak this one. Interesting. And that one works as a blocker. No, that one's smart. Did not see that guy. So that'll be a hard one from ship number two is my best guess, unless this guy bumps into him anyways. I guess he's not really setting up a block. Be interesting to see where the star killer bases go here. Mm -hmm. uh, Apostasis, yes, I do work on The Expanse. I've worked on season three and on season four right now. I am in film and television. I don't quite know how to put this. But he's kind, kind of, of a big, big deal. deal. Not really. I mean, people know him. Clung my way up to the top. I'll be a big deal in like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> quick draw, quick draw has the high ground. And as we've seen, that's usually not going to work out okay for anybody else. I mean, it worked out all right for Obi-Wan. It sure did, if because he, he had the high ground. It's true. He's going to have the high ground himself. In a, I'm really, in a, I think that's the first alt art we do once the, they drop. Is it the Obi-Wan card standing on the high ground? On the high ground. I think so. I got to look for that still. Always on the high ground, just constantly on the high ground. Yeah. Wow, Obi-Wan's shaping up to be an amazing support piece. Yeah, five pegs on the high ground. I love it. Ten pegs. We need, uh, like, Philip Gales bringing back his B-wings that were, like, literally to the ceiling. So Philip Gales used to have the stress bot Y-wing on a, I, without any exaggeration, a one and one half foot <laughs> long magnetically <laughs> rotating peg. Yeah. Just in case there was some shenanigans going on the board, he could have this, like, weird 30 degree foot and a half long angle yeah. this Y-Wing. I'll never forget it. Yeah, me neither. All right. Dion bumping into quick draw, keeping the uh, keeping the evade token from the decloak. That's not going to clear? That is not going nowhere. No bueno. Hard two is the way to go if he wanted to clear. That's a hard no. And then he could have barrel Bates rolled. Four, stay in put. Still stressed from a white maneuver. Quick draw, going too far for a bump. He's gonna have to take a rear arc shot. Ooh, does quick draw even have? Arcs pointed forward. His arc in the back. Nope, arcs pointing forward. Interesting. No action, so you can't link and rotate it back anyway. So that's not that's not that's not a bad turn. So quick draw getting no shot. Upsilon number two getting one shot, and Dormit's having his choice. But the Phantom shoot first. Yep. Only one Juke active right now. So Phantom number four going to shoot, uh, just hope for natties on Dormitz. Oh, interesting. So Phantom number three or number four is firing? Nope. Disrespect evade. There it is. Maximum disrespect. All right. So we got number three. Range one okay. and crit yep. from number three. Who does not have a token either. Yep. Just So two. he's eating at the very least a crit. Quick draw doesn't roll two evades here. He's going down. Juke. Juke dead. that one. There he goes. Okay, so 59 points on the board mm -hmm. for Chad. Sorry, for Dion. Mm -hmm. And just a lot of health left on these Starkillers. So close game. Um, I mean, we talked about this at the beginning of the game. If, if, uh, if Chad comes out of this turn killing Phantom number two, then we're going to see what happens. Number two rolling five dice on number three Phantom here. Hey, Hot that's what Dion needed to see. Steaming garbage. That is what Dion needed to see. That gets him back in there. Yeah, that's that's a that's a pivotal moment yeah. there. And then Dormouse is going to have a range one as well. Squeak, squeak. Unmod against unmod. Let's see what happens. Ion, what was range two? Hit, hit, and crit, hit and crit, and all the damage. Dion has a all the damage. Yep, there we go. That is number two. He's he is no bueno. He is, as they say, dead skis. Yeah. Structural or weapons failure? Well, good to get that out of the game. And then there were two. Interesting question from the chat about whether or not Upsilons are better in 2.0 or are we only seeing them because the FO doesn't have other crew carriers? I think that we're seeing them more because of the strategy archetype that was developed around hyperspace tracking them. I also think, though, we have probably are seeing them more because of the fact that we have split factions. Like, True. think about it. When you were able to put FO, like Kylo and Quickdraw in with Palpatine, in a, why would you spend all the points on an Upsilon when you could have taken a Lambda? No, in, in 1.0, there was never a reason to take a Upsilon over a Lambda. No. Lambdas were better. better Other than the fact that it looked cooler. It's the same thing. They got a rear, the Lambda's got a rear arc yeah. now. Jam, coordinate, all that fun stuff. Yeah. However, for its stat line and for its crew and what upgrade capability, it is incredibly aggressively costed. The Lambda or the Upsilon? No, the Upsilon. 
Well, they just came it, down, right? For it, no, they didn't. They're they didn't the same pay. price they were since launch. Really? Yeah, they haven't dropped in price at all. Shows how much I pay attention. Well, it's just, you know what I mean? It's just that it's the pattern analyzer came out, and there's all the fact that you could put them. The fact is you can put named ones on the table with crew. Phasma is a big part of their appeal. Four attack dice at the front is a big part of their appeal. And as you said, and we saw in this, ra- this round, the hyperspace comm wave tracker stupid thing, whatever the hell it was called from 1.0, is a big part of their appeal as well. So it's this guy who's in a problem. Yeah, he's now he, he can't he's K-turn. He, yeah, can't he can't K-turn, K-turn. which is what he wants to do. Uh, clearing stress on a phantom is never any fun. Okay, folks, we're approaching the 40-minute mark in the game. Just going to check here. None of the top 10 tables have finished yet. Happy to report that we have the wonderful Mademoiselle Emily Parker on one of the top 10 tables yep. here this weekend. You may recognize her soft and heavenly voice from previous VWTV Live Absolutely. stream coverage. And we might even be lucky enough to hear it again tomorrow. Unless Table. she's too busy bodying fools. Tristan Singleton finished his game early of the GRX. Thumbs Won up. Very well. Good job. Everybody's favorite teddy bear. Love you, buddy. Yeah, I think the, the claim that the hyperspace jam. tracking data is broken is a bit much. Um, it's, it's a very specific and gimmicky application. Correct. It's also a thing that you can only use once. And you have to put a put it on a 60-point ship. Yeah. It's like the that can't turn ship. around. Yeah. Yeah, it's a one-trick upgrade. I don't, I don't think it's broken. The thing about the... Great move from the Upsilon jamming that Phantom. Yeah, absolutely. Because now he can't cloak. Cloak. Exactly. And that was really key. Well, that's not true, actually. A jam token doesn't remove a blue token. It only removes circular green token. Uh, oh, that's true. Well, I don't know. So that would have to be a judge call. cloak but not evade is the, is the thing here. But Dion's going to take the opportunity here barrel roll. to barrel roll. Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to want to one turn and, and stay on, um, you know, if he ends up here, he'll have a good arc to see if, if this guy comes around yeah. here. So we'll see what happens on, that, on turns to come. So Zian's going to bump there, but at least he's going to clear stress because he can K-turn. And now he's very close to getting behind both of them and staying behind them for potentially the rest of the game if he can get Phantom 4 around the way. Yeah. Does he clear? I think he actually might clear. I think he clears the base. Just barely, but then the nub's clear. It might be a... Ooh. We're going to see Cam Murray's in there. Yep. He's got his hands on the table, so he's judging this. We'll get a proper judge call. Oh, he clears. Oh, yeah. Is it clear? It looks like it. Okay, so just clarifying jam here. A ship is jammed if it has at least one jam token. Uh, the player whose effect caused the ship to gain the jam token chooses for the ship That's new. to either remove one of its green tokens yep. or break one of its locks. So jam okay. does not apply to the cloak token. Okay. Yeah. So if uh, the Phantom were to evade, it would be jammed. But if it but were the Phantom could just hit the cloak, it could just hit the cloak just, action. Yeah. Okay. And then gain and then just change the cloak nothing. So that didn't clear unfortunately. I don't know if that's unfortunate because Yeah he fits a 3k next turn anyways. Oh that's actually close. It's dicey. Yeah. Alright so we're skipping that turn going right to dials. Yeah. Coming up on 32 minutes left. Chad with 97. Dio and Morales from Chicago with 59. Two fully health phantoms against essentially two full health Upsilons here. So much will the depend question, on the, Dion's flying. The question is, does Chad remember to assign his Phasma stress? Well, Phasma's oh, over Phasma's here. Oh, Phasma's way out there. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. My I think apologies. that Phasma has had her time in the sun at yeah. this point. Well, now she's going to take four or 1,500 turns to get back into the game. Yeah. But Because a hard two puts you here, which is no bueno. Yeah. So, oh, well, I don't know how to fly ships. All right. I'll go back to small bases and shut up. Listen, I can't do anything without bendy barrel rolls or weird, weird, weird decloaks or k turns. Or the option to, to actually strikers. do or not do your, your aileron. Big shout oh. out to the judging staff here this weekend. Our lovely marshal, Mr. Devin Monkhouse as of the always. Prototype Toronto League, taking over as marshal, putting his hand up, saying, Yes, Cascade Games and face to face. I will provide the expertise and know how that your judging staff requires. And I will also rope in my good friends, Cam Murray. From a GRX, uh, Ooh, pulls off another Canadian GM. national champion, Alan the Hair himself, Fung, and we've also got Mike Reverso, who's uh, on the judging staff, and they've been doing an absolutely great job. Everybody having a blasty blast. Very interesting match we got going here, Devin. Two full health phantoms, so we're going to see number three. I think try to jam um, phantom number three. Uh, he I did. Just don't like being jammed. 
He did jam it. He tried to jam it. Jammed about his. No, I'm not going to say it. (laughs) You're not going to say it. Not going to say it. Keep it clean. PG13 today, folks. I've been instructed. If it's uh, if it's PTL League night, I'll drop a few. uh, I'll drop a few profanities. But Victor's kind of giving me that look like he's going to burn a hole in the back of my head with his laser beam eyes. So I'm going to keep it PG13 today. See, I think that one I might have hard won. Yeah, you see, I honestly don't know if the jam was the right idea. I think that taking a lock might have been a good idea at that point. I mean, the, the one jam is, is, is fun, but I think that the Upsilons would have much rather had the lock because... The lock would have felt real good. When they need it, a lock is everything. Like, those, those Phantoms are going to need at least two or three passes. See, this is why I would have preferred the hard one. Then he could have cloaked on this way, and then this hard two would have been there, and could, then he could have started harassing. Yeah. He's got to get the Phantoms into range one and start pulling shields off these ships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one of them locked. I'm saying if number two had locked as well. Yeah, instead of attempting the range three jam. Yeah. No, I, I, I yeah. see what you're saying. Because yeah. yeah. the jam doesn't give him all that much. As we figured out, he can still decloak. He can still cloak, which is what he did. The on there taking the option to cloak. No, I think uh, Upsilon three locked Phantom three. That's where the, the lock token is right there. Yeah. And then you've got, um, yeah, no, I'm just worried about the, like, like if number two does the two turn here and has this arc, geez, a lock would have been useful. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. we're going to see what these guys do in a moment here. As I was saying, I don't believe the Phantoms should be planning to go in there and kill a Upsilon in the first day. Dion needs to be planning to go in, take some shots, get half health on one of them, bug out. Do another pass. The problem is he's he's down substantially in points and close to half health. He's got to get one of the ups off the table. He does. Ideally, he wants the heavier pointed one. He wants number two. Well, he wants none of these phantoms at full health equate to one of these. So he's got to get both of them to half health and keep one of his phantoms at full health. Mm-hmm. So even though he's really got to kill one of them and half the other one. Um, it's going to be... A long 30 minutes for Dio, and he's got to fly it very carefully. And if he gets out of position on one turn and one of these four die shots are double modded or single modded, it could go very poof very quick for one Which of these is why that target lock was a very good choice. Well, you know what? Jam's not a bad choice, but. Well, I mean, just as like, you know, if you're, if you're wondering, if you have target lock on your dial, if you're, looking to re, if you're looking to re-engage or reset up your engagement, focus might not necessarily do anything for you. If you're not taking a shot, you always want to try to take a target lock when you have the option. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I guess I learned that the most in 2.0 when playing Fren Rao. I, I started 2.0 by playing Fren Rao. And I got to tell you, like, there are those turns where you call it right, you do a three bank or a two four or something like that, and you land just out of arc of everybody else. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to boost over here and get no. Nope. I'm going to take the target lock. Take my lock right now. And because I'll bug when out next turn and come around. Exactly. Because then when you get his range one, folk, remember old, good old days when he had PTL? It's like he's, it's like he's his old self again. All right, so... Upsilon, the Starkiller base pilot, has two oh, turn and reinforced. Oh, right. We forgot about that reinforced thing. <laughs> I mean, I didn't forget about it. <laughs> I'm still not so sure how I feel about reinforced as an action. I don't know if, if, if uh, competitive play ever had a place for, uh, what are they called, epic actions. Uh, they've fixed, they've made, they've made reinforced better. Than it was in no, it's, it's, 1.0. It's considerably less good. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They made it better, as in it's it's better for your opponent. Yeah. Um, but I'm still not in love with it. I get it though. They're trying to keep big base ships in the game. Like I was at League Night the other night, and I had a shot on a reinforced you, and he had two dice and a reinforced, mm-hmm. and I only rolled one crit result, mm-hmm. and that crit went through because he had reinforced and two dice, and he rolled blank eye. Yeah. And you can't and reinforce. And reinfor- you can't reinforce what? You can't reinforce the one hit. You oh. Ca- you can't stop damage from going oh, through. Oh, okay, so it's impulse. infinitely less good. Yeah, I mean, like, it's infinitely better for the game than it used to be. Correct, yeah, okay. because you can't You're always taking one. Attack. You're always you can taking only one. reduce an attack. That's kind of funny. Yeah. Okay, so Phantom number three, taking a focus token... Four has a shot. It's at range three. See what he does here. He's going to need some good paint on this one. Hit crit. Okay. This is on Dormitz, range three, who is worth less points than the Starkiller base pilot, but is closer Mm -hmm. and more conveniently placed. Nothing to juke. 
Bupkis, two shields. And I think he reinforced the front arc. Yeah, I didn't, it wouldn't matter. I think yeah. that the, the fan, yeah, that's out of range. All right, so the circular base pilot has a range three obstructed shot on phantom number four here. Nope, unobstructed. Unobstructed, yep. One result. Yep, he's got to focus. I'll spend it. Two results. Oh, look at all that. Some evades. No, 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 there they all are. There's that Windy City luck. Not a lot of choice for that one right now. When this guy is just going to go here and say, I'm going to kiss you in the face. So I'm not in love with where that Fatten is going to be stuck with. Well, number two is also the Starkiller base pilot that could also pattern analyze and stop. Yep. And then he can just one bank into his buddy here, yep. and he'll still have an arc that's kind of like that. Yeah. So, yeah, this, this guy is... Unless you well, what you do is you decloak this way first with this one, and then you decloak this way with this one, and they both try to go that way. Sorry, we're just we're maddening all over this thing. The key for Dion in this turn is going to be finding a way to put his Phantom number three in a spot where he's only getting shot by one of those two uses. Right, but if that's a double modded or even just a focus token, that's still more attack dice than you have evade dice. There's uh, still you're, you're you're basically you're trading with life. Right, with advanced cloaking device being gone from the game, the phantoms really only survive by not being shot or by burning stuff down before they take those shots. So your shields are your resource for when you don't have that option. Yeah, and, fun and fundamentally, the way that fire control system has also evolved, mm -hmm. phantoms not being able to shoot and then obtain a target lock, mm -hmm. huge. Yeah. Well, uh, they've, I mean, they've completely changed the way they are, which is why they had to make them cheaper because they took away a lot of their tricks. Before they relied on either brute force evade die or just never being shot, and they were very frustrating for your opponent to play against, I can't deny. At least now you can kill them. Okay, so as we anticipated, Dion is decloaking forward. Okay. Taking that evade. He's got so that's probably a locks on this three one. bank, probably, would be my guess. I mean, get it in behind. Chad, Chad really needs to have read Dion's mail at this point. Yeah, I mean, if this guy hard two's left, did he hard two left? Or is he going to one straight? Yeah. yeah, one bank. No, I think Chad read Dion's mail here. If uh, Phantom number three, three turns into the Starkiller base pilot, then Dion will be able to put two guns on Dormitz, but then Dormitz will get a target lock shot back at Phantom number three. He can also target lock and then get a coordinate from the one behind him for a focus and have a fully modded yeah. five dice attack. Clarify to our American friends chiming in, it is not illegal to read someone's mail in Canada. It is just plain rude. I thought it was an offense. Pardon? Isn't it an I thought it's like I a, don't know. I'm pretty I sure. I'm almost positive it's an invasion of privacy. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if it's on, if you, if you like live like in Windsor, it's probably Patriot Actable. Well, I mean, there, yeah. <laughs> I mean, is your mail really worth it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Canadians are usually just too nice to read each other's mail anyway. Yeah, exactly. Usually you get a knock on the door and say, Oh, sorry, your bud, uh, your, uh, your mail ended up in my box. Someone brought this package over here yeah, for you. Oh, sorry, your bud. Three bank, interesting call. I don't think Dion's going to get art. Nope. He needed a hard turn. I don't know why he went so fast. Probably could have stand with a two. He might have been scared of a hard two from uh, Starkiller Base Pilot 3. Okay, so he is just going to try and dodge these yeah, arcs. Yeah, he's then. trying to okay. get in behind them, which is admirable and makes sense. It's a good plan. I'm oh, a K-turn. You're a, a salty dog. I did not see that one coming. I wasn't yeah, idea. I think he might actually. Oh, that's pretty darn close. Cam's going to have to measure that one. Yeah. Yeah, if he's if he's in both those arcs, he's in big trouble. Range one from the Phantom on the Starkiller base pilot. Has an opportunity to get all the shields down here. Not many rolls like that. Two hits. Juke. Disrespect evade. Juke, juke, juke. Does he spend the focus? It's going to depend on whether or not he thinks he's in arc. He does not think yeah. he's in arc, so he's spending the focus. No, it's not worth it. Yeah. One damage, one shield on Starkiller base pilot. Yeah, it's a, it is but a scratch. Number four, doubtfully going to have a shot. Hard node air, bud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yep. Cam's going to be... get the table judge come around check that Cam one. Cam will be joining on the spot for that one and definitely want to check that arc for sure. Okay, so we're going to get one player to hold down the... Ooh, it's looking close. Oh, 
it's looking close. That is going to be Everybody a very, very close. Everybody clinch. Everybody clinch. Oh, that's out. Oh, out of arc. Oh. Oh, out of arc. Wow. My blood pressure. Yeah, but number three isn't out of arc. No, definitely not. Range two, obstructed. Obstructed. Four v three. With a focus. Four versus three dice. Yeah. Obstructed. Phantom does not have a focus token. You spend Hot it. Hot steaming garbage he from the Utsalon. Absolutely. Utsalon. How come he had a target lock? lock? Four. How come he re-rolled? He's got a target lock. Ah. Both of them have target locks. Ah. Oh, he's using the FFG officially <laughs> provided target lock. <laughs> it's obstructed. <laughs> uh, Phantom rolling one of eight on three dice. Not great. Looking at taking three damage unless Oof, uh. he spends the evade token. Well, he can't cloak anyways. He's stressed. It's a cloak action, not a cloak token. Yeah, the evade token's at a sign. The cloak action, you're right. Yeah. So he has to spend it. Yeah, so he loses it. shield, stays above half health. Yep. Yeah. That is no bueno. No, definitely not. I'm surprised number four cloaked this turn. I think a leisurely two Hard turn one. would have been exactly where number four wants to be. Hard one. I think that Dion has really, really... Um, to his credit, expertly set this up that number four will probably not get shot again again. So no. now it is a, a question of time. Can Dion get enough points into these Upsilons before time is expired? Well, but Phantom, a Phantom 3 is, is in for a world of hurt, though. But See, I would have liked, instead of the 4K, I would have liked either the 3 bank or the 4 forward from Phantom 3. Well, the point is, so, yeah, I mean, like, you've got, okay, so everybody's saying, well, you know, Phasma was gonna can't double stress you, right? But but Phasma can't double stress, right? But my point is this: if you're gonna end up stressed anyway, yeah, why did you want to shoot this one? Because it's worth more points. No, I understand that, but you want to get behind them, not facing down the front of their 18 dice from the primaries. Sure. So if the Phantom, which was here, yeah. had done a three turn and bumped. No, no. I mean, he went two forward for decloak and then a three bank. That's here and then take the evade token, then you've got a decloak and then a hard one, and then you're up this one's ass with both of them. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. I don't, I don't oh, know if... We um, broke it. Dion going to decloak forward, I reckon. Yeah. I mean, again, what do I know? I've only ever flown two Phantoms. I've never flown four of them before. I always fly the two named ones together, so... But they work really well when they're putting pressure. Yeah, I mean, it, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. You do, these, true, exactly. Honestly. Yeah, that makes sense to Number me. Number two, pattern analyzing. That's the other... Yeah, that's a great move. I yeah. don't think that Dion's too bank from the Phantom bumps there. Nope. Oh, that was a rough spot for number three. Coordinating the target lock back from Lieutenant Dormant's here. Dormant's just going to leisurely one forward, bump yeah. into the back. So to s people who are good with statistics, on four attack die, what's preferable, focus or target lock? Or is it uh, statistically the same? I always prefer target lock because you get to roll the dice. Fair. But, but that, if you're me, me and you've seen me roll dice, I have. Then don't take target locks. I would take focus tokens okay. if I was you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Well, it's still a range one, but yeah. that was the lesser of two evils. Well, I mean, Dion has said to himself, "Listen, I've got very few options here. Yeah. I've got to try and get half health on dormits. Yeah. And then hopefully Phantom Number Four will be able to pull this out. I mean, I don't think Phantom Four is going to be shot at again, but the question no. will be." whether or not four will actually be able to pull uh, enough points to uh, to pull it out here. He's got to get one of them dead and one of them at half health in 17 minutes. That's a tall order. It absolutely is. But who knows? He could roll like a god right now, right when he needs to. He could use it. Come on, here comes five damage. Do it. Do it. Do it. That's the opposite of five damage. Stop rolling perfectly average, Dion. Oh, maximum evade. disrespect. I think he's rolled an evade on every one. We've seen a lot of single <laughs> die evade results this whole tournament. It's yeah, been like almost amazing. too much. Something in the air with these single evade die Thomas ships. just taking one damage. Yeah. Range two in arc. Yep, Phantom on Dormants. Yep. There we go. There's hit some. And, there's hit some. And crit. All right. A little bit see. spice. Nope. Juke it anyways. I don't Juke care. Juke it anyways. I don't care. Juke your eyeball to an eyeball. Just out of fear theory. So Dormance is now shields down. Yep. Half health. There we go. Some more points. D 
Dion now only trailing Chad by seven yep. points. We're going to see if Dormitz can finish off Phantom number three. Five dice, hot steaming garbage. Yuck. Oh, we're one day away from your favorite result. There it is. Socks and sandals. He gonna die. He gonna die. Hit, crit, crit. Oof, all the damage. Stunned, loose, blinded, this, it's all done. So now does that one phantom kill two shuttles in 15 minutes? Everybody in the hall got 12 minutes. We've got 15 and a half left on our stream table here. See, here's the problem. There's one of the few situations where the way the new phantom works is a little bit of an if iffy, especially with the juke. You want to decloak so that you can gain the free juke token, but you don't want to go that fast. All he wants is a one bank and a focus. Well, I mean, Chad's got one choice here. He's got to split them up. Yeah. Yeah. That's he's got to make. He's got to make Dion commit to one of them. Yes. And then make that the opportunity for the other one to get turned around. So I think you decloak this way, two back, and just hold there, and then hope that they split up, and then do a one bank, and not have to decide until the next turn. Yeah, it's fine for the Phantom to go fast. You think? Yeah. Because if fine. this guy hard twos this way and he goes all the way up here, well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. He's doing glancing blows, so maybe that's exactly what he's going for. He could hard one here, too. There you go. Oh, two bank. Okay. So, Star Killer base pilot here. Probably going to coordinate. Probably going to reinforce, actually. Reinforce the rear? Yeah, reinforce the rear. I'm right? Because that's everything, every ship back behind there, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Reinforce now works at the side arc on every ship. Well, also, if any part of your ship is in anything anything other than the reinforced section, you're no longer reinforced. That's the change. Correct. Yeah, if you're straddling the halfway yeah. thing, yeah. You're, you're, you're not... You're any part of your ship that overlaps the reinforced section, you're you no longer... You get to fire at the non-reinforced section. You got it. Yeah. I like it, though. It's going to work. All right, spend it. The oh, pressure is definitely on Zion now. So oh, another that blue half milk is so good. Another half points gets him thirty. Mm. It doesn't get him there. He needs fifty-eight points. Reinforce one takes one. Yuck. So he needs fifty-eight points, which means he's got to kill one half points the other. Stranger things have happened. Yeah. So half points on the Star Killer base. That's the one that's stacked up. Is. I'm so bad at math. That's was that 36, 37, 38, 38 points. Yeah. The math is very difficult for the amount of damage Dion needs to put out. Chad has the math advantage here, and what yeah. Chad can do to seal his win is wait for the turn where Dion is right on his six, fake, moving. Stop. Stop. Let him bump into him or fly past. Waste him. a turn. Yeah. And Grion has to keep the pressure on. He has no choice. He's yeah. got to keep going at them. Well, he's only got one choice. Hard one left. He has to take out Dormitz, and he has to half health the Starkiller base. Now, the yeah. Starkiller base pilot only has two shields left. Yeah, but it's going so that way. Dion has to kill Dormitz, and that's a tall order in of itself. Especially with Reinforce and this, that, and the other. Right. And here's a perfect example of where Reinforce is just a horrendous Turn choice. Off. Because think about it, you're rolling one die. Yep. You gotta roll an evade and reinforce to reduce two damage. Yeah. That's if the Phantom had three results. No, he or took you the could focus. Just focus and mod your one So is this not a turn that you would take a target lock? I mean I take a target lock with Dormance here. Well Dormance is moving now, fantastic. but I'm saying the Star Killer. That's no, a fantastic move by Dormance. Um, Dion knows that sorry, Chad knows I should say that Dion has to commit to Dormitz because... Yeah. Oh, Dion being a little slippery. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, that is nice. Yep, going to try and half-elf them both. See what happens. Well, that's the Starkiller base pilot. That's the one that he wants. Yeah, I mean, the Starkiller base pilot is worth more points yep. for sure. Yep. Spending it well, he's free. basically just got to kill that one. I mean, it's it's not in, it's not impossible if he just kills that one, 
Starkiller base down to half health now. He's just got to kill that one. Base on his dials. He's going to two cloak forward hard one. Is what I would think. Yeah, the two four, the two D cloak forward, one hard barrel roll definitely works very well here. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, he wants to continually keep focus so he can constantly be putting two to three damage through. He's got to focus. Yeah. Definitely could have kept up the fight on Dormance, but then if he had been here, Dormance could have stopped and then yeah, the which Star is Killer exactly what Chad right looked like he thing. was setting up. Yeah. That was what that was the turn that he was looking to set up. Like you were saying, that's what he's going to look yeah. for. It looked like he was looking for the exact same thing. Dion playing at a good clip now knows that he's actually got a win condition possible. He's absolutely still in this game. Yeah, got a long, fast move from the Star Killer base pilot here. The question is to see the problem for Dion though is that he wants to go hard twos and hard threes, but he can't really afford to go fast in case Chad stops. He can't afford to bump, and this is where you're you're stuck. You're chasing, right? And you want to go fast, but you can't. Yeah, and you know the Star Killer base pilot also. I mean, the one thing that the Phantoms oh, I forgot they had a red hard one. Don't have going for it as well is the fact that uh, Dion doesn't have any um, uh, re rolls on offense. He's just got the focus token. Uh, Dormance staying stressed. Yep. No pattern analyzer. Range yep. three from this Phantom here, which so. is why Chad took the um, oh, reinforce he, so he so can actually evade something. Be able to dump a crit into the Star Killer base pilot here. Ooh, Ooh, spicy! He'll juke the one and Juking then juking one, reinforcing. No, you can't reinforce an eyeball. Can you can only reinforce blanks. Uh, OCX coach, I coach, I do believe he does know. You can see the urgency and clip in his uh, play. He definitely knows how much time he has. Or yeah. how little time he has is what we should say. Yeah, it's just adding It does not add any results. No. Change one die result to evade. Okay, so yeah, so he only took one. Oh, it reduces the... De okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So it reduces his three attack dice down to three damage down to two, and then his other evade takes off the other one, and then it's just a crit. Yeah, and the, after comparing the, results. the biggest difference between Juke 1.0 and Juke 2.0 is that you... In, in 1.0, it would change it to the evade, and you couldn't modify that dice by anything other than just using a focus token, right? So this is a turn where if Chad stops, he might catch Dion. Because if Dion does the 2-4 decloak and then a, like a 1-bank or a hard 2 or whatever to keep up the pace, yeah. expecting the run, and he and he stops, and he can smash right back into him. Yeah. However, if he just does a one bank, then he's fine. Well, it's interesting here because no matter where this Phantom goes, I'm pretty sure that Dormance is going to get a shot on him this turn. Uh, it's stressed from last turn's hard one. He is. I think. Oh, he's using a hard two over the two, rock. Two, and I think not the, care? Turn, the hard two clears that rock. Really? Yeah. It's tough to tell. Yeah, we're going to see what happens here. So Cam's at the table. Yep. Going to do the hard two for the players here. Just see if he's on a rock. Looks like. Oh, I've he's said, clearing it. He's on it. He's. He's sitting on it. I think the maneuver template's sitting on it. I don't know if the ship is. You think it clears? Is. We're going to see Cam's right there. So no, you're right. I think, actually, you're right. It might be. Oh, he clears. He clears. Yeah. Yep. So he clears. Yep. Rolling for damage. Takes one. Taking one on Dormus. See, That's I like that one bank. Leisurely one bank. That was the right choice. He can't afford to bump. Yeah. Dion's playing like a champ right now. He's doing everything right, keeping the pressure on. He he absolutely has a chance to win this game. Yeah, six minutes, 50 seconds. Dion got to focus spend up. Spend that hit money. Hit there. Spend it, spend, spend, spend. All right, here's the reinforce roll from the thing there. Nothing to juke, nothing to reinforce. Kaplow, hit, hit, crit. Got to reinforce and take hit, crit. Okay, and then now Dion gets the fire with the uh, Dormouse. Oh, all the crits. Loose stabilizer, so... Number two going to take a damage on this turn because he can't go That's straight. an unfortunate turn because he needs to bank. Yeah. Got a range three shot from Dormance on this guy here. Chad's, uh, Chad's chance for half health here on the Phantom. He still has a lock, right? Oh, that's money. Doesn't need it. That's Fanatis. money. Dion that's doesn't believe his eyes. And now he's going to spend oh, his evade. He's got to spend his evade to not take half he health. absolutely has that's to. That's rough. Yeah. You can see the frustration in his body language. Yeah, okay, I feel so you, brother. Sigma Ace, number four, loses shields. Still holding still on to those MOV. Still above half health. So, Starkiller base pilot's going to one bank. Eats the damage, Takes potentially. the damage. Okay. Coord now, he can't coordinate 
dormant. Oh, I take it back. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. I take right? it back. I don't it's know what's going to happen. It's a spicy AF turn. This is, this is crazy. I mean, dormants could just two turn and can, like, now, can you YOLO. Co can you coordinate turning down crits? Yeah, it's an action. You can take whatever action you want. So, oh, he's stressed still from the hard one previously. Two what, turns ago. And, and a one bank, I think he's only, one bank, one straight? No, the one bank's white, the two bank's blue. So, oh, that's, uh, yeah, but the thing is, though, is that Dion's only chance to win this game is to kill this one yep. and not die from this one. So Dion has to one bank. Yeah. He has to one bank the Phantom and take a focus and hope that he gets the dice results. Because if Chad stops there, he has to do the one bank. He has to assume a stop at all times. I think that... Um, That's I, the problem. I think that our players have to remember that they have four minutes. And at the end of the day, both of these guys can go past this turn. If this yeah. Phantom can cloak and not take the damage, yeah. get behind Dormitz, finish off the Starkiller base pilot, he could do it. There's a win condition on this table for both these Absolutely. players. Absolutely. Well, right now, Chad is winning. We're getting right down to the wire here. Yeah. What a last game for you for the day. Yeah, absolutely. What a great game for Dion. He's, he's, I mean, he's clawed back from a, a difficult position for himself. So Your lovely wife sitting next to us, looking at us cockeyed. Ignoring me as always, which is, which is her favorite thing to do. Oh, so he's just going to go aggro with, with uh, yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay. Because he only needs one damage to, to guarantee. If he, even if he loses the, the Star Killer base pilot, one more damage still puts him back in the lead. Which means that even if John kills the Star Killer base he pilot, he has to take zero damage on this attack. Next turn, Dormants can one turn, yep. be right there. Yeah, and have a catch target the lock. Sigma mm -hmm. in his arc, and then see where he goes. This is going to be a very. A very close match. This is this is this is providing that Dion. So Dion take the focus and hope for God dice. Yeah, Dion's thinking that um, they've got less time than they do. But that doesn't necessarily mean he's not going to. There it is. So range one. Oh, that's rough. With no juke, one one evade keeps him alive. There it is. The maximum disrespect roll keeps him alive. And now all he has to do is do one damage. Well, actually, I mean, Chad's already winning, so it doesn't even matter. Man, that was close. That this was exceptionally close. is a close one. That was really close. He has a target lock. He's got four dice. It's range two. Uh, he's just got two hits already. Just spend it. Spend it. Do it. Do it. Ooh. Hit. He's taking crits, the crit no matter crits. what. Oh. Yeah. See what happens. First crit. There That's it. it the fuel leak seals it. Down Absolutely to the wire. Great match, top you two. effort from the Windy City Gold Squadron leader. Mm -hmm. Applause erupting around the table. His squad mates there are celebrating a very valiant effort. Absolutely. Chad Henderson from the X-Wing Junkies out of Manitoba, mm -hmm. Winnipeg, Manitoba, the victor. Score one for Canada.